Hello YouTube, this is Ken Pocalypse, and today I want to um, welcome you to another edition of Which TV Do I Have This Week? And, you, you know, all joking aside, uh, I did get rid of the um, OLED C6P. Um, the reason I got rid of it was for uh, build quality. Um, there was a, a couple features that I didn't like about it. And I loved it because it was an OLED. I did. And OLEDs, deep blacks, you'll never get as deep as black. I think uh, you get down to 0 .0002 nits on your black levels, which is the darkest you can go without just, you know, turning the TV off. But um, my issue was where it was a curved TV, um, the center of it, where the LG mark is, um, actually started popping off the screen actually became separated from the frame so um, I, I, I took it back because of the build quality uh, I know that I wasn't going to get one for that same price and I don't know if I'll ever again buy an OLED but uh, as for now I'm actually um, I've actually made a new purchase and I know what you people are going to say they're, they're going to be like why did you do that? And, you know, I'm, I'm a big and I'm an avid supporter of Dolby Vision. And I know HDR10 Plus is not Dolby Vision. Uh, Dolby Vision has come a long way. They're in Sony's. They're in, uh, let's see, they're in Sony's, they're in LG's, they're in Vizio, they're in TCL. And Best Buy even puts them in their Insignia brand. It supports Dolby Vision. Uh, the only one that does not support Dolby Vision at the moment is Samsung. But Samsung, supposedly, this is a rumor, is going to release an update to include Dolby Vision in some of their higher-end TVs, uh, i.e. the MU or KS8000 the KS or MU 9000, um, the Q7s, the Q8s, and the Q9s. Um, just for the simple fact that it's an overwhelming demand uh, for people uh, wanting Dolby Vision because it's so much, it's it's so much better when you're watching a movie. The metadata makes uh, makes the picture a lot uh, crisper, uh, more color. Um, more than what you could do with the standard HDR10. And now the HDR10 Plus is supposed to mimic Dolby Vision with scanning metadata instead of you know just a just just a single line of data all the way through the movie. That being said, I want to show you what I purchased. And well, before I get to that, I just want to say that. I love Vizio. I think their P-Series is probably one of the best uh, budget TVs there is. TCL uh, has a great budget TV in the six, the, uh, what is that, the P607. Um, LG has the OLEDs. I, I love OLEDs. You'll, you'll never get deeper blacks. Um, I like Sony. Sony's got a good TV in the, I believe it's the X900E series, which supports uh, complete, uh, it supports complete uh, HDR10 plus, and it's supposedly having an update to support Dolby Vision. It's got a real, real, uh, I'm sorry, not a real, real, excuse me. <laughs> it's got a great uh, processor in it, so it makes it, uh, makes the picture look 10 times better than like say the 850, 800 or uh, especially like the 690 series that Sony's trying to push. Uh, the, if you want a good HDR TV with high nits, um, I would go with uh, the 900 series. Uh, you can't go wrong. Uh, Sony's a good TV and I'm also, uh, you know, I, I support PlayStation through and through. I love a PlayStation. So, um, now, that being said, you know, I love my TVs and everything. Um, a lot of people's going to be shocked 
to what I did purchase because, you know, I, I wanted an OLED uh, once more. I got it, and then I took it back. And But, you know, I'm deciding not to throw a bunch of money around anymore. The reason I got that OLED was because of the great price. Um, but, you know, I caught this TV on sale, and it is... Ta-da! It is the Samsung Curved 8500 series. Uh, it's an MU8500, so it's got it. It boasts, and when I say boasts, it means Samsung's bragging that it it is a full HDR 1000. It is 1000 nit TV. Now, if you go up to the 9000 series, I believe it's still a thousand nits, but if you go to the QLEDs, I believe they go up to 1400 nits. Um, reason I wanted to pick this is because, you know, um, a lot of problem with regular HDR10 is when you watch it through an Xbox One S or an Xbox One X that's coming out, or you watch it through a standalone player, if you don't have a high enough nits, it dims out the picture. Now, I did notice that on LG, uh, the OLED I had, if it was running in Dolby Vision, there was no darkness at all. That's the way it's supposed to work. But if you tried a HDR movie, HDR10 movie, excuse me, um, of course it put that film over it. Uh, on an OLED, it's not as noticeable, but it still dims out the picture. and uh, But it still looks great. Um, but this one, that, well... Uh, saying that an OLED is at peak 741 nits uh, so that's why you know the HDR 10 content looked uh, brighter on it than it would like an average like a um, like a six th uh, what is that a 6300 um, the lower end LGs any time you buy a lower end television and you try to do HDR, you're not getting true HDR because one, you don't have the nits, and two, it don't have the processing power. So, um, I got this one because it boasts 1,000 nits. Uh, it's got a triple black engine, so uh, unlike the KS8000 series of last year, um, where this has the triple black um, engine in it, what it does is instead of having all that um, the glare and the light bleed through and stuff it eliminates it and you know that was the reason I didn't get a KS series last time is because I noticed the bleed through uh, from the bottom because you know that's that's where the light was in those and um, um, <clears throat> excuse me and they were quantum dot which means you know it gave it a more vibrant picture but um, if you was watching in a dark room and, um, you know, bright scenes, you can notice in the black bars below that you would see, um, the light bleed through and it just, it makes for a bad experience watching a movie. It just totally ruins it. Um, but anyway, I got this because of the triple black and let me adjust my camera there. I'm sorry. Uh, you got the 4K Color Drive Extreme, which means it's got the best processors. I think this is a this is a quad core, I believe. It's got the HDR Extreme, which means this is actually a true uh, 1,000 nit HDR compatible, uh, and uh, it's also got the 240 motion rate. But uh, I wanted to show you right there. Oh, my camera. Certified 4K Ultra HD. And uh, it is compliant. Let me move over a little bit. I know, I know you want me to move my camera. Complies with the consumer technology. So, you can see what it says right there. But, uh, of course, it's got the smart hub. It's got the smooth action 240, the triple black, the HDR extreme, and the 4K color drive extreme. And, uh... Pardon my camera finesse, but uh, pay no attention to my HDMI cords hanging over there. <laughs> but anyway, um, I chose this TV because, you know, I really like Samsung. Um, 
it, it uh, boasts a brighter picture than the OLED. Um, of course, the blacks ain't going to be as black. I understand that, but I have seen this picture in action, and the darks get really dark. Not OLED dark, but really, really dark. And also, it's a fast response. Uh, the motion rate is excellent on this. Uh, like for uh, fast moving uh, scenes and everything, it, it actually keeps up without any judder. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm going to get this hooked up. I'll probably uh, throw up another video tomorrow or the next day uh, showing you the features of this and, uh, and how it looks. So smash that like button, subscribe to my channel, and share my videos, and I'll have some more for you later. Thank you.